We're finishing up the AFC East with a trip to Buffalo to talk about the Bills. Look, we're talking about the Bills. We've got to start with Josh Allen. Another fantastic fantasy season. Another season in which he has put up huge volumes of fantasy points, whether it be through the air, whether it be with his legs. Do you think, Tom, that Josh Allen can be that top one, top two, top three fantasy asset at the quarterback position again next year? I do, and I think we're probably going to see him get close to the first round in best ball drafts, which last year he was going in the middle to the back end of the second round, and it was a a cost I said was too much. I said he couldn't pay it off, and I wrote several articles saying that it was incredibly hard for QBs who were drafted as the QB1 in best ball and redraft to pay off that cost because they often regress. And yeah, Josh Allen did regress, but we also saw just what an incredible season he can have. Like he had eight weeks in the top four and that kind of reliability is incredible. You know, he was a QB three in points per game. He his second most passing touchdowns in the league was 35 behind, I think only Mahomes. And that's three seasons in a row where he's thrown for 35 now. So, you know, it showed me and I think that you can definitely just consider him that if he's healthy, he's going to pick up sort of 4,000 yards, 35 touchdowns, and he's constantly going to get you over sort of 16, 17 points. He only had one game below that mark this year. Yeah, I mean, from a dynasty perspective, he's essentially unobtainable, isn't he? In super flex drafts, I'm, I'm, I'm putting his value at four firsts. To be honest, I've got plenty of Josh Allen shares, and I think if someone offered me four firsts, I'm probably still saying no. I think he is he is one of those players that no matter what you're willing to pay, the person's probably asking for more right now, right? Yeah, definitely. And likewise, I've got a few leagues where I picked him up when he was coming into the league and there was a lot of discourse about him. And he was incredibly cheap back then. But now I'm not sure I'll ever trade any of them because firstly, Josh Allen is Josh Allen, but also this offense that they've built around him, the coaching that he's got. This is a team that can be successful for a long time. I mean, Stefan Diggs, he's been brilliant this year, the wide receiver six, third season in a row with 100 plus targets, over 1,200 yards. He's had 10 touchdowns in back to back years. And he's had like 2.9 fantasy points per touch, which is just ludicrous, really. Yeah, Diggs is a strange one, isn't he? He's, you know, the the dynasty value we're already seeing starting to decline. I think that we'll probably see his best ball value still stay nice and high for next year. But he's under contract until 2028. They can't get out of it until 2025 at the earliest. He he is going to be around in Buffalo with Josh Allen for at least three more years. Do you think he could potentially be a sneaky guy to to go out and try and acquire in Dynasty? I, I mean, I know best ball, he's, he's going to be expensive to acquire in those drafts. I think so. And I think with the way that people are valuing 23 picks, maybe you can even get like a 110 and trade that for Stefan Diggs as we get kind of close to the draft and the rookie fever hits. But the way that Stefan Diggs wins... It's just through elite route running. And if he can keep doing that, even as he gets older, even if he slows down a bit, if he's just creating separation through how well he, he runs, then that's perfectly sustainable, in my opinion. Absolutely. And we're talking about the Buffalo wide receiver room. We have to talk about perhaps the the, the most talked about player in the offseason, Gabe Davis. Didn't quite live up to the overall wide receiver one that I saw some people quoting him as. What did you make of his season last year, Tom? Yeah, and living in the best ball streets, this was there was so much back and forth about Gabe Davis. There seemed to be nobody in the middle ground. It was very much like you're either over here or you're over there, and you either believe that he could be a complete league winner or you believe that he just wasn't worth drafting. He had two top 12 weeks, which... Um, that's not great. I mean, you know, uh, we see wide receivers on good offenses. They spike. They have those kind of real top 12 weeks four or five times a season, not twice. He did get a lot of his fantasy points through touchdowns. He had seven touchdowns, which was tied for the 13th most amongst wide receivers. But I think his value has plummeted because things just haven't seemed to click in the same way with Josh Allen this year. He had like when Josh Allen targeted Gabe Davis, six of Josh Allen's 14 interceptions came on those plays. So it really feels like what we hoped was there based on the playoff performance last year with the five touchdowns just never really came to fruition. Yeah, and and rounding out the Bills, we've got to talk about the backfield. Obviously, they went and spent out big draft capital on James Cook in last offseason. Devin Singletree 
he wasn't sexy. He wasn't anything particularly exciting putting in your run line up each week, but averaged 11.7 points per game, finished just the running back 27 in points per game. He is a free agent. Do you think this could be James Cook's backfield next year? Could he be next year's Ramondre Stevenson? It's possible. I mean, and Devin Singletary did do a good job. He had five top 15 weeks, but he only had three games over 75 yards. And what it feels like the Bills have been wanting is that player who can be explosive and who can really deliver when you need a play. And Devin Singletary isn't the running back, the player that you go to when it's like the game's on the line and you need a big play. That player is much more in the ilk of James Cook, who you know, his big run rate was 13.7, which was higher than any other rookie running back. So we kept getting the rug pulled out on us. Like There'd be weeks where I was ready to play James Cook in DFS and then he'd just have no usage. Then he'd spike the next week, and then he'd go back to having very little usage. So it was quite frustrating. And I definitely think there's a possibility for James Cook to really have a big role next year. But it's kind of hard to get away from the fact that when the Bills traded for Naeem Hines, they'd been connected to Christian McCaffrey quite heavily at the time, and they seemed to really view that as a point that they need to solidify that room and add something incredible to really put them over the edge.